So what is up everybody it is Rodak with Rodak's Revival here and we are back to talk about the 250 West Coast Championship. Let's get into it. Now I don't know if anybody has seen the entry list already but it looks like we could have a pretty good West Coast series. And just real quick guys if you haven't checked out my 450 class breakdown kind of giving my A1 predictions, some early championship predictions and stuff, talking about some of the riders, go check out the last video, the card will be up above. But anyways, let's get into these names for this 250 West Coast series. So I wrote down some of the more notable names in the series. I'm also gonna try to break it down. I got my three contenders, some guys that are on the fringe of being contenders, or at least who have who I think, and then some possible sleepers as well. But before we get into all that, let's just go ahead and check out these names. We got Craig, we got Moseman, we got Shimoda, Swole, Forkner, Marchbanks, Hammaker, McAdoo, Thrasher, Nichols, and Lawrence. And that Lawrence being Hunter Lawrence because unfortunately, as you guys, if you're fans of the sport, you already know that Jet and Hunter were supposed to go at it this year in the West Coast Series. I was so excited to see that and Jet went down, so he's gonna have to race the East Coast Series. So what I'll do, guys, is I will work my way back. I will do the sleeper guys first, then the fringe, and then the contenders, and give my A1 predictions after that. So who I have as sleepers? I have Thrasher, Moseman, Marchbanks, and Hammaker. Now, I know Thrasher has won some races, but we have such a small sample size. We just, I just really don't have that trust in there to throw him in there in the fringe of the contenders just because i believe he has what two two wins now i know he has at least one but we just didn't get big enough of a sample size last year so if he comes into a1 swinging then sure he'll immediately jump up in my list but i just don't know at this time and then i have moseman on there and i know he's been in the class for a while I, he got that final victory last year but there just always seems to be some bad luck going on, whether it's a mistake, a bad start, whatever the case may be. From the past, I haven't seen the consistency to be able to run up there and to be a top three or a top five guy um, consistently, because like I said, there's, he's always running into bad luck, whether it's a bad start or some sort of mistake. And then I have March Banks. We saw March Banks, he came out and got that Daytona win, but we really haven't seen too much from him. I know he can get top fives and stuff like that, but he is on that Club MX Yamaha, so I just don't know if it's up there towards the factory bikes. He might have to ride a little bit better or a little bit harder, but I don't believe it's on the level of those factory bikes. So therefore I had to put March Banks there because again, he can have some bad starts. The consistency for me just isn't there. And then lastly, we're coming in with Hammaker and Hammaker is kind of in the same situation as Thrasher. I'm just like, I haven't seen enough. So I know he can, he's on that PC team, that bike rips, he can be up front. I believe if he has the consistency and mindset to do that, he definitely has the speed, but I just haven't seen enough of a sample size to go ahead and throw him into that next echelon of guys. All right, guys, so now we're coming into the fringe guys. I, those guys to me are consistent top five guys. Um, I don't necessarily see them as championship contenders, but I do believe they can make some noise and make some waves. So coming in first on that fringe category is Shimoda for me. And there's no knock against Shimoda. He is extremely consistent, but he does remind me of almost like a Ryan Dungey. Like he's not gonna ever be the fastest guy, but he is super consistent. But I believe someone like Hunter or those top three guys that are gonna be in this series, I just believe that if they can ride consistent as well, but I also believe they can ride faster. Now, that doesn't say that he found some speed in the off season, but that's just from what I've seen in the past, I gotta put him there. Next, we got Jalik Swole. He got way more consistent last year. His speed seemed to be up, so not really a whole lot on, a whole lot on Jalik Swole. I think I'm just hoping that he has a good season. I think he has the potential to be really good. Um, do I see him as a champion this year with Craig and uh, Nichols and Lawrence being in there? I, I don't, but I do believe he can be on that like fringe top five guy every single week in and week out. And next to so maybe your surprise, but also mine when reading through the list and breaking down um, each one of these categories that I'm gonna have is Austin Forkner. Forkner did not have a good season last year. I don't know if it was the wreck in the final round and he's just not trying to get hurt or if he's trying to, I don't know what's going on with Forkner. Hopefully maybe he rebounded this year. The last Supercross season was not great. 
Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to compete for that championship anymore. It seemed like based off of last year, how he rode last year, like all the wind was out of his sails after crashing out with the possibility to be able to win that championship in Salt Lake 17 back in 2020. So maybe he has a bounce back year. We definitely know he has a speed if he is on, but it's the stay consistent since he's on that PC race team. He is fast. We've seen him win plenty of races before I had to put him in that fringe category. And then lastly in the fringe category, we have McAdoo. Now, I might catch some flack for this one because I've talked about consistency and McAdoo last year was like the absolute opposite of consistency. We all know the kid's toughness. We saw the Atlanta crash. Everybody who watches the sport, we know that story. And it was amazing, but he also had like three other huge crashes in the same series. The kid has the speed to win. It's one thing this year. If he can come out and be consistent, I believe he has a chance at the championship or at least a top three, if not a top five. But since we don't know, and all we know him as is to be inconsistent, that uh, I had to put him in that fringe category, but I believe if he can get the consistency down he he has the speed to win these races now lastly guys we are coming down to the three contenders who i believe will be the three contenders and like i always say i'm no expert it's supercross as well anything could happen two of these guys can go down in the first corner and their season be done in the first race so it really you know we're just all going off speculation here but for my three contenders i guess i'll start off with number one and that is being christian craig he's a veteran of the class we know he has the speed i believe he can have the consistency he had a few tip overs last year that cost him but at the end of the year i do believe he will be in that top three for the championship and then next up we got colt nichols we colt nichols proved it last year he won a 250 championship last year so there's no reason to believe he can't be fast and consistent he was the most consistent last year was super fast no reason to believe he can't do it again and can't just get back-to-back -back championships we saw ferrandez do it we saw sexton do it so there's no reason to believe Colt can't do it. And that is really my only argument there is I, I believe Colt can do it again. And coming in with the last of these contenders, Hunter Lawrence. Hunter's fast, Hunter's pretty consistent. I do believe he needs to get some better starts this year, which I think he'll have that dialed. He was second in the championship last year. No reason to believe he won't be in that top three again. No reason to believe that he can't also win this championship. He has the speed. He has some pretty good consistency. If he can have some better starts, I do believe Hunter could be your 250 West Coast champion this year. Now the A1 predictions. Let's go ahead and get those out of the way. Now for me, who I believe is going to be on that third step of the podium, I do believe it's going to be Joe Shimoda. And for second place, I have hunter lawrence and then finally the winner of a1 i have colt nichols and just like i said with lawrence there's no reason to bet against colt nichols it's kind of just like how you trust somebody you trust them until they give you a reason not to he gave us a reason to trust him he won the championship last year so there's no reason to trust that he can't come out and repeat it again this year and i think he's gonna come out firing at a1 and uh, yeah I think Colt Nichols is gonna be on the top step of that podium at A1, but who knows? We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Now again, guys, if you haven't checked out my 450 class breakdown here before we get to A1, go ahead and check that video out. It is the video that I posted yesterday. And if you like this video, please go ahead and smash the like button. It really helps out. If you like the content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And guys, if you have your A1 predictions, your championship predictions, any sort of suggestions that you want for me to make in future videos, go ahead and leave all of that down in the comments and we will see you all in the next video. Peace.